Hello again, and welcome to my third video on the Little Man computer. This video is going to be concerned with branching in our assembly language code. So, branching, if you want to think of a more higher level language like Python, is almost like an if statement. So, in our code here, Similar to our last two, we're going to request an import and store that as first, and request another import and store that second. Then we're going to load first again, but this time we're going to subtract second from first. So that's how subtraction works in the command computer. The second value is always subtracted from the first value. Now, in this case, if that subtra subtraction yields a result of zero, then using this identifier here of same, branch 0 same, we will then jump from line 6 in our code down to line 10. So the same takes us down here. At that point we will then output the result, which obviously will be 0. Uh, if our first was 10 and our second was 10 and we subtract second from first, then we're left with 0. So we get a 0 in the output and then the program would halt. However, if the values were different, so once we load first and we'll assume it was 10 and then we subtract second which we'll assume is 5, we'll be left with a value of 5. Now that value won't be a 0, so we will jump past this line here and we will then load a predetermined variable I have down here called diff or different. And with that variable, we've saved the value 1 already. So as you can see here, at location 14, if you look at our code here, we've already got the 1. So what would happen at that point is, we would output a 1, and then the program would halt. So basically our code here, if two values are the same, it will output a 0, and if the two values are different, it will output a 1. So let's run our code. I'll just run it a bit faster than our previous videos, as we've already seen these first few stages. Um, so we're on instruction 0, which is going to be concerned with an input. So we are fetching that code now. We're going to decode here. And now we've executed the value we're going to put in is 10. And 10 will be stored in the accumulator program counter moves on and we are now on instruction number one which is concerned with storing this first variable in memory and we're going to store that location 12 so 10 and I'm just going to make it 12 the program counter ticks on and we are now on instruction two which is going to be concerned with our second input Fetch the code 901, we'll decode that as we go. 9 in the instruction register, 0 on the address register, 0 on down here to be input. For our second value, we're going to put 10 again. So, using these two values, we're actually going to use the branch 0, and we should, all going correctly, output the 0. So the 10 is now loaded into the accumulator. Program counter ticks on again, and we now fetch our next instruction. And our next instruction, as we know, is concerned with storing. So we're going to take that 10, and we're going to store our application 13. Program counter ticks on again, and we're on instruction 4 now. So instruction 4 has been fetched. It's 512, but if you remember, 5 is concerned with loading, and 12 is the location we're loading from. So 12 is going to fetch that first value, which was 10, and it's going to load it back into the accumulator. So after that instruction complete, we move on to instruction 5. The program counter implements to instruction 6. And instruction 5 is concerned with subtraction. So the 2 signifies the subtraction, and the 13 indicates where we're going to get the value that we're going to subtract. 
the width now fetch the 13 from that sorry the 10 from location 13 in memory and we've just completed the subtraction and the accumulator now holds a value of zero we've now moved on to instruction six I'm just going to slow this right down here. So instruction six was our branch, so branch zero. So the seven lets us know that this is a branch command, and the ten lets us know that's branch zero. So it's going to check the value in the accumulator. The value in the accumulator is zero. So we now jump to line ten. Ten is now in the program counter. And that is the next instruction that we're going to execute. Program counter increments now to 11, and so that will be the next line that I'll be expecting. Um, let me just speed that up again a little bit. So, line 10 is contained with an output 902, so we've got 2 in the address register and 9 in the instruction register. And we are now output the value in the accumulator and we'll send that through our output. We now move on to instruction 11, the program counter increment again, but as we know, we will not make it as far as 12 because the program will halt before then. Line 11 fetches that halt code, which will then be decoded in the CPU. And executed and the program halts. So now I'll just show you what would have happened if the values hadn't been the same. So we will run that again, but we'll speed that up quite a bit. So this is our first instruction concerned with our input. And we're going to input 10 again. And will be held in the accumulator and we'll fetch our next instruction. We'll then decode that instruction and execute it, which is concerned with storing the value of 10 in memory. We'll then move on to our next instruction, which is concerned with the input of our second number. We'll then input that number. This time we will go with 5. So, as you can see, they will be different this time. That five is now stored in the accumulator. And we now fetch our next instruction, which as we know is concerned with storing that five back in memory. So we now have the ten and the five in memory. We now move on to our next instruction, which is concerned with loading our first value again. We know our first value is held at location 12. So we bring the ten back into the accumulator. Now move on to our next instruction, which is concerned with subtracting our second number from our first. We know our second number is held at 13. We take the 5, we go to the accumulator, we subtract in the ALU the 5 from the 10, and we end up with 5. We now do the branch 0. Because the value is not 0, we will then move on to the next step in the code which will be concerned with loading diff. So diff, as we know, is held at 14. We're now going to go to 14. We're going to take that one, and we're going to load it into the accumulator. We are then going to fetch the next instruction, which, as we know, 902 is an output. It's going to take the value in the accumulator, and it's going to output it. So we now have a 1 to signify that the values are different. And now, as with the other branch of our code, the program will now hold. And that is how we use a branch zero in our assembly language code.